This new My Hero Academia opening is filled with hidden details, and you guys hit the like goal on the last video to get an opening breakdown. So let's do it, let's just start the process of going through the opening and breaking down everything for you anime onlys that you want to find hidden in the opening. And of course, warning, there are spoilers, but I guess by watching this video, you're just telling me that you want the spoilers, right? So let's discuss everything they teased to or hinted at in the manga in this opening. The opening starts off with a new My Hero Academia logo and some old comic book style bubbles of old comic book colors and fonts, finally hitting home on something that I think gets lost in a lot of the My Hero Academia anime, and that's the fact that My Hero Academia is super comic book inspired. So everything from the sound effects we see on the screen to the colors, bold lines, and bende dots really adds to that vibe, and it's really rare to get that out of MHA I feel like, but last season they did really put in a decent effort I'll say for the first half of the season, which did finally start to give us more of the onomatopoeia popping up on the screen, like Deku Smash or Kaminari Zap. From there, we pick up on a nice shot of Deku surrounded by rubble and devastation, and we know that, of course, is because of Shigaraki's awakening, right? Since he destroys the entire area around him when he wakes up. I love the greens used here and how, despite the fact that it's all green, it doesn't just feel like a big monotone mess. I've also got to say right away here that the art style of this opening really blew me away, and I especially love the shadows and shading on a lot of the cuts that made it into the opening. The trailer goes on a bit to show us Bakugo speeding through a forest with his boom sound effects popping up all over and some nice orange colors filling up the screen, and then of course we cut away to Shoto, who's going to be right at the center of quite a bit of action in this season, so seeing him dodging, falling, building parts with what looks like and buildings in the background is very fitting, and it sort of reminds me of this giant ice move that he does recently in the manga, where he freezes several city blocks. I want to say thank you to the team over at Bones for finally focusing on the main trio in the opening, instead of trying to cram in each and every single 1A student with their own focus shots and all the heroes and all this stuff, it just really gives the opening time to breathe and focus on what's important in this arc, which is the main trio, some of the pro heroes, and Shigaraki. We see Shigaraki with a wave of decay coming from him, and sending rubble towards the the camera, which again, makes perfect sense since this is exactly what Shigaraki does when he wakes up. But we see Shigaraki sporting his awesome new cape that we've seen in a lot of the promotional art for the season, and keep an eye out for that because he does get the cape in a really funny way in my opinion. Immediately after this, we get a trio of manga panels just straight up redrawn and added into the opening, and I think this is the first time that we've ever seen anything like this of MHA. But I love the fact that they're using the manga panels in the opening, because last season Bones definitely had trouble with messing with the source material too much much, so them showing these panels here feels like a commitment or at least a message to us that they know this material and that they know exactly what's important to the community here, right? So hopefully that translates well into the episodes. Now these panels here are from different points, with the ones on the left and right being from pretty much when Shigaraki starts to split apart in his fight with Deku, right as All For One's conscious starts to call out for his brother and one for all. But interestingly, the middle panel is unmistakably from Shigaraki's dream. And that's a dream that he has right before he wakes up, where we see his parents and his family members reaching for him and grabbing him at all the places that their hands were placed on Shigaraki's body when they were just hands to pull him back and stop him from walking into the vestige of all for one. But Shigaraki leaves them behind and tells them to stop denying him as he walks into all for one's arms and accepts the quirk. The scene transitions into Aizawa and present Mike standing together and notice how the actual transition to the scene was black smoke, echoing the black smoke that we've seen Kuragiri use. But another look and you can actually see that they're in that interrogation room within Tartarus where Kuragiri is being held. And actually, if you look really, really close, you can see beyond Aizawa and present Mike in the reflection of the two-way mirror, a slight little bit of the chair that Kuragiri or I suppose Shirakumo is sitting in on the other side of that glass. This reminds us what the stakes are for these two specifically, who last season found out that the Doctor and All for One had taken their friend's corpse to make it into a suitable aid for Shigaraki, since Shirakumo himself was never good about leaving someone alone on their own when they were in pain or needed assistance. Following that, we see a quick scene of Mirko tearing her way down the hallway that leads to the Doctor's Nomu Lab, a scene that we already saw taking place in Episode 1 of Season 6, now with added colors and sound effects for her dashing and jumping. We aren't going to see Mirko a ton this season, but do do expect to see her go all out in episode 2, which is releasing next week at the time of recording of course, an episode that I'm sure is going to be the first big one of the entire season. After Mirko, we see Gran Torino in what's possibly the best looking nighttime city background that I've seen in all of My Hero Academia, despite the use of CGI that I think I could see. But again, this shot just manages to make Gran Torino look really cool, and this shot in particular also makes me pretty sad, since yes, while Gran Torino will have an important role to play in this arc, and the arc that I believe we're ending off on in this season, 
Him standing on this rooftop alone does remind me that this is what he used to do with Nana Shimura, and ever since her passing, he's been all alone on these rooftop patrols. Now, after a quick cameo by Endeavor, we get a scene of Dobby standing in the rain, which is a small hint to events to come in Season 6 revolving around the pair of Flame users that is 100% gonna break the internet, seeing as in the manga, it outtrended the 2022 presidential election. And from there, we cut to Hawks entering a room surrounded by feathers and carrying two large feather swords in his hand. This shot is the famous scary hawk scene where he takes advantage of the hero's ambush on the mansion and goes to the room that Twice is in in an effort to capture or kill the villain because of the major threat that he poses to all of society. But as Hawk said in episode one, he knows that Twice is actually a good guy but he's too loyal to the League and too willing to give them whatever they want. So despite Hawks actually liking Twice, they have to fight, which leads perfectly into the next shot of Twice using his sad man's parade again, this time with eyes full of tears for the loss of his newfound friendship with Hawks, but also the fact that he blames himself for everything that's about to happen to the villains at the hands of the heroes. Finally though, we cut back to Shigaraki after the wave of decay clears away from him on the battlefield, and we see him in his new slick black outfit that we now have in high quality thanks to new renders of the characters of the new season, and as saucy as this look is, I'm pretty disappointed that it didn't last longer, so enjoy it while it lasts. Now in this same shot, we get another round of Shigaraki manga panels, basically redrawn straight from the page in a more anime style. And again, bravo to whoever's idea this was, because not only does each shot look very good, with a lot of detail and shading, but just seeing some of these moments again, even in small flashes, has me extremely hyped for Shigaraki and how deep he's gonna get into his bag in this season. And that's good because of course the job of the opening is to get you and me excited. I don't exactly remember where the top right panel is from, but the bottom right one is from Shigaraki floating in his pod. The one on the far left is the moment that Shigaraki's healing turns back on in the middle of the fight against Endeavor, Deku, and the others. And the middle panel is from Shigaraki desperately trying to lunge at Endeavor before being stopped by Gran Torino and then putting everyone in a very awkward situation. From here, we finally cut back to the main trio of heroes of each of them putting their heads down like they all will at various moments of the season during their own character defining tremendous moments. But despite that incoming trouble, they all lift their heads because they can't give up. And from here, we get a few action scenes from some of the heroes using their quirks, showing off for the camera more or less. But it ends on Hawks using his feathers to kill as many Twice clones as he can within the room that they're both fighting in to basically try and counter Sad Man's parade by keeping the number of clones at nearly zero. At this point though, we do get some shots of the other UA students who aren't completely absent from this opening, with Ed Shot's rear guard coming in first with Momo and Kirishima in the front, and if you want a better breakdown of what teams there are and who is in them, feel free to check out my video from the other day breaking down all the teams and their locations in the war arc that we will be updating as the season goes on. From there, we see Deku going through the battlefield using Black Whip, before launching himself high in the air. And in the next shot, we see him dodging multiple black and red tendrils. Now you might recognize these as the quirk that All For One used during his fight with All Might in Kamino, and they're back via Shigaraki in this arc, who at several points really focuses his attention using this quirk to full effect, causing some rather shocking moments. Here, I believe Deku dodging these in the air and attacking while maneuvering is definitely a tease to the seventh user's quirk float, which does unlock in a very similar scene to this, where Deku has to take the fight to the sky once Shigaraki is able to use his quirks again. Quickly, we see a shot of the high-end Nomu from the lab waking up, and not only do we see the ones that Mirko fights in the front, but actually there are some other ones hidden here, like the near high-end dog in the top left, who is one of the near high-ends that we see scouring the battlefield after Shigaraki destroys the hospital. And on the right, correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't that the wing Nomu that Shigaraki rides later on in the manga during the Star and Stripe fight? I know we definitely see that Nomu in this arc, so regardless, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's a hint towards us getting that arc in this season, but I think we can at least keep the door open for the possibility, since again, it is just one fight that can be handled in a single episode. After the Nomu, we see Dobby starting to do a dramatic entrance with his hand on his chest and another arm cloaked in fire, and again, Dobby does have a very dramatic entrance to make in this arc and some harsh truths to share with the cast. So keep your eye on him over the course of this entire arc because it never stops being interesting when he gets on screen. Interestingly enough though, we do see the All Might statue right after this scene of Dobby, which I think is the animators being a little cheeky, since in the manga we do see Dobby completely melt the statue in the current arc. 
After the All Might statue, which like All Might only has worse days ahead, we see pro heroes like Cementos, Yoroi Musha, Edshot, Midnight, and Gang Orca, heroes who are all in the same area basically, to take down the villains at the Gunga Mountain Villa. Now after this we get a few quick flashes of various characters, we very briefly see a flash of Gigantomachia rampaging, and that's because though the heroes have a very well thought out plan for the villains at the mountain, I don't think there was any way for Hawks to truly prepare them for Machia's presence, right? Since he only ever saw him sitting around and doesn't actually know how crazy powerful this guy is. It sincerely could have taken all of the heroes just to stop Machia himself, so the way that he's handled in this arc is going to be really interesting to see, and again, expect mayhem. Like, expect travesty when this guy is on the screen. We then quickly see the Doctor whose role in this arc is to pretty much just be captured after everything he's done, and then quickly see Toga holding a red cloth in her school uniform with a knife in her hand. And then we get a shot of Shigaraki with his hand stretched out, and the hole in his hand for All for One is glowing red, which I think is a rather interesting touch, and I wonder if they'll do that in the anime, since All for One has had his hole the entire time in the manga, ooh, that sounds weird, but I think they forgot to give it to him in the early seasons. This exact shot from a different angle is in the manga though, when Shigaraki finally finds Deku and Bakugo and puts the fear of death in the two of them. Then we see Deku of Lightning surging around him and one for all energy pouring out of Deku's eye, much like how we've seen tears surging out of Deku's eyes before in the series, but now with a power and rage unlike anything that we've seen from Deku before. I promise you, if you think that you've seen Deku mad, then the scene that this is hinting towards, which is Deku's biggest rage moment in the entire series, and possibly the biggest one that we're ever going to get to be honest, you have it. I really like how much more shading there is around the eye that's just surging of energy, because it really tells us that this energy is coming from a dark place, and in this season, we need to be prepared to see a different Deku. Then finally, the opening ends on Deku activating 100% one for all, at the front of the battlefield where he'll spend most of this arc to be honest. With Bakugo, Shoto, Nejire, Ryukyu, Gran Torino, Aizawa, Endeavor, Manuel, and Crust in the back, as well as 13, who for some reason is there, I don't remember. I really don't remember 13 in this arc, to be honest, besides like one small panel. Eh, but I guess Crust is there, right? So. And after getting back to a quick flash of our three main characters again, we get a final splash image of the main important characters of this section of the story, rushing towards a smiling Shigaraki to end out the opening. So that was the opening, I really like the visuals even though I can sort of take or leave the song, and honestly I hope the other openings are handled in a similar way to this moving forward, because it had just the right level of stylization and the color and art direction that I feel like MHA deserves, and it really did its job of hyping me up for some of the events that we're going to see in this season, especially some of the ones that I was worried about. But I suppose I'd be even more excited if the music was better, if there was something better paired of this great animation and there was a little more hype or just felt a little more fitting for the events that are about to transpire. But regardless, this was everything hidden behind the new My Hero Academia opening for season 6, but it doesn't end here. And that's because to go with a new opening, we also got a brand new ending, and it too is filled to the brim with all sorts of interesting lore goodies and things that we can take away from it. So if you want to see an ending song breakdown covering all those things in the same way we just did for the opening, let me know in the comment section below and by getting this video to 1200 likes. I'll see you tomorrow for a fresh upload, and who knows, it might be that one. But it's all up to you. Pineapple out. Peace.